Okay. All right. Happy Mother's Day. All right. Awesome. There we go. There's some rustle and bustle. Guys, hello. We're so happy that you're here. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms and the mom figures in the room. Um, We just love a day to honor you and to honor all the things that you do each and every day, all the sacrifices that you make and the ways that you lead and love your family so well. We're just so, so grateful for you. And so we're going to jump right into our message tonight. It's going to kind of talk a little bit about Moms, in the midst of this other idea that we're settled into right now, we're in the second week of a sermon series called Underrated, as you guys just saw, and we're really tackling this idea of what does it look like for us as um, one generation to be leading the next, right? So a lot of times we'll use the word mentorship for that and how important that is and what we can, how, what part we can play in that and where we are in the story. We're looking at these two characters in the Bible, Paul and Timothy, and they are, they're one of the best examples of good mentorship that we could find in scripture. They're just incredible. And so tonight we're going to continue looking at their story. But first, there's, there was this one time we were, we were over at the Orange Conference. Um, Just two weeks ago, was it? My brain is so messed up with our calendar these days. We've been traveling and stuff. I think it was about two weeks ago. We're at the Orange Conference. It's this wonderful family ministry conference in Atlanta. I do student ministry around here. And so our team went over there just to see how we could learn and do that better. And one thing I love about Orange is that they love having fun. And so in the midst of all this stuff that you're learning, your brain is packed with information when you're at Orange Conference. If you've been to a conference for your place of business or your job, you know what I'm talking about, where it's just thing after thing and you can barely digest it all. So So in the midst of all that, Orange has games outside, and we're all in student ministry or kids ministry, so they know that we're going to play them because they're like, yeah, you're a professional big kid, so go ahead, here's some games for you, adults. So we're outside at lunch, and there's this big, giant metal pole out there, and the boys are like, oh, it's a vertical jump contest, so cool, and I'm like, what does that mean? And so it's this big, giant metal pole, and there's all these little metal poles sticking out of the end of it, and so basically the idea is that you stand under it, and then you just jump as high as you can, and then wherever you hit, it'll swing out. Those horizontal ones will kind of swing out so you can track how high you can jump. So I'm like, well, all right, well, if, you know, you know me, like, if the boys are going to do it, then I'm like, well, I can too, but I'm just physically not as tall right? So there's only so much that my empowered personality can do for me in this situation. So the boys are jumping and, you know, they're getting pretty high. And I'm like, well, I'm going to try that. So all five, four of me runs and jumps up at this thing and I try to hit it. And I don't, I don't even touch the first one. I don't even get to the lowest one, right? So I'm like, all right, because I was standing right under it. I'm like, well, let me run and jump then. So I get a running start. This is concrete, by the way. And there's a line for Chick-fil-A, because we're all Christians, and there's a Chick-fil-A food option at the lunch thing. So there's a bunch of people watching me do this. And again, we're all in kids' ministry, so we kind of stopped getting embarrassed a long time ago. So I run and just jump and go for it. Still nothing, you guys. It was just way too tall for me. This whole game, it was actually really discouraging because I couldn't even play, right? Like I couldn't even, I'm trying, I'm giving it my all, I'm doing the thing, and it's just too tall, it was just too high. And I think when we get this idea, when we hear the word mentorship, that word has a lot of weight to it. And I think we feel like we're looking at something like that game. It's just too high. It's just too big. Like, why even try? Because we look at our own lives and we say, well, I'm not that wise, right? Or my experiences haven't always been the best, right? I've messed up. I've made mistakes. Or I don't know everything about the Bible or, you know, whatever thing it is in our our heads. It's kind of our qualifier for us. We look at all these ways that this is just out of our reach, that it's just too high for us to get to. And so we sell ourselves short and we count ourselves out. And if you ask me when we do that, the next generation, and for you, whether that's, uh, whether you're leading people that are younger than you, whether you're parenting people that are younger than you, which that would be how you parent, or if you're just, uh, if you're in a workplace where maybe you've got people around you that you work with or work for you in some capacity, we, we sell them short when we do that because we're not giving them our leadership. We're not giving them this guidance that we need because we think it's just so complicated to lead the next generation, to do this thing that we're talking about. And what we're gonna do tonight is jump into the, each of the two letters that Paul wrote to Timothy that we've got recorded in our canonized Bible, and there could have been others, but we just don't know. Those are the two that we've got on record from him. They're called First Timothy and Second Timothy. It's really easy to remember. And I'm going to look at both of those guys, and we're going to kind of unpack this one key thing that Paul came back to in each of his letters to Timothy. And I think that it's going to help us see that it's not as complicated as we might be making it. So if you guys have your Bibles, you're welcome to look with me. We're going to start in First Timothy. We're just going to jump into one verse there, and then a couple verses in Second Timothy. 
So 1 Timothy, it starts in chapter 4, verse 14. It'll come up behind me as well. And this is Paul talking to Timothy. Now keep in mind, we call this the Bible now, right? We call this a book in the Bible. These are verses. Paul didn't write that though. Paul wasn't writing the Bible. Corey said that last week, which I was like, oh, that's so good. Paul wasn't writing scripture. He was writing his friend, his mentee, Timothy, a letter. It'd be like if I was texting uh, one of our youth students, right? I'm not writing scripture there. Paul is writing to this person that he's leading. And so there weren't verses, there weren't numbers. This wasn't called First Timothy. This was a letter that Paul wrote to someone he was leading. And so Paul, this guy who is an incredible church planter, he's leading the new church that has just been birthed after Jesus was raised from the dead and ascended back into heaven. And he is now raising up this young leader, Timothy, to keep going and continue the charge because we need him, right? Paul would have died eventually, he did die. So he has to, we've got to keep this thing going. He had to keep passing on what he learned. It couldn't all rest on one generation. Paul had to keep leading and had to keep bringing people up. And so we're jumping into one of the first letters that he wrote to Timothy to encourage him and to give him this guidance that he needed. And in the midst of just really practical things like how to lead difficult people or teach this and not this. Paul jumps in and includes this in the fourth chapter of the book of First Timothy, and he says this. He says, Timothy, do not neglect your gift. Hold on to that word neglect. He says, do not neglect your gift, which was given to you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Timothy, don't neglect your gift. Don't neglect your gift. And then if we look into the second book of Timothy, in the first chapter, verses six and seven, so now, how much time has gone between these letters? I'm not sure, but enough time has gone by to where this is significant, that Paul would come back to this idea once again to the same person, the same young leader, Timothy. And Paul says again, Timothy, for this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Guys, Paul says to Timothy, don't neglect the gift that's in you. That implies that there's a gift in Timothy. It's not, and it's not whether or not Timothy's gifted for leadership, right? It's not whether or not there is a gift in Timothy. There is a gift in Timothy. There is a gift in this young leader. And Paul, as his mentor, is saying, don't neglect that. Hey, don't ignore that. What does it mean to neglect something? It means we don't take care of it. It means we don't pay attention to it. It means we ignore it. Paul's looking at this person, he's mentoring Timothy, and he's saying, don't neglect that gift. Don't let that go unnoticed. And again, he tells him, fan into flame this gift of God. I picture if there's a small spark and you kind of wave your hand at it or something, you know, it's going to catch fire, right? You're going to fan it into flame. It's going to grow. It's going to get bigger. It's going to affect more things. It's going to be more vibrant, more lively. And Paul's telling Timothy, take care of your gifts, Remember that you are gifted, Timothy. Remember that God called you to be a leader. Remember that God chose you for this, Timothy. And guys, I can't help but wonder what would happen if we just took that attitude when we approach this idea of mentorship, or if that word is too intimidating, just leading relationships, interacting with people that we could possibly uh, lead somewhere or care for. Guys, Timothy did not need a 12-step discipleship program. Timothy didn't need Paul to come at him with all the answers and to say just the right thing. He just called out his gifts. He just said, Timothy, don't forget that this is in you. Timothy, don't forget that you are gifted. It's not that complicated. And I think we make it way more complicated than it needs to be sometimes. As a person who does student ministry for a living, I can tell you that this is one of the best parts of my job. I mean, I get to work with about almost 200, depending on the time of year, of just the best students in the whole world, the best middle school and high school kids. And then we've got our kids over in the elementary age group too. But just to be able to see each and every one of them come alive in such different ways and to see how unique they all are and that they're all gifted at very different things, but there's no question that each and every one of them has a gift, right? Like any, we have small group leaders in here. You guys would say the same things. You know, you look at your kids in your small group and you're like, absolutely, you're, you're incredible. You're all gifted at different things. You all, you're good at different things. You are talented at different things. You're passionate about different things, but of course you're gifted. But they're on the other end of that, and they're waiting on bated breath. 
And they're asking us one of those five questions that Corey introduced us to last week. See, Corey introduced us to this idea that we learned at Orange Conference as well, that there's five questions that the younger generation is all asking of us, all asking of us who are in mentorship or leadership or just caring roles in their lives, whether you're a parent or a, or a small group leader or whoever you are, wherever you find yourselves, a teacher, a boss, anybody. And it's this, it's that, do you know my name? Do you know what matters to me? Do you know where I live? Do you know what I've done? And then this last one. Do you know what I can do? Because friends, while we are like Paul in this story, looking at all of our Timothys and saying, of course you're gifted, don't neglect that. There's no question, just don't neglect it. Our kids are on the other side of that saying, but wait, do you, me too though? But am I excluded from that? Is, am I included in that? Am I the exception to that rule? What if I'm the only one in my small group that's not gifted? What if I'm the only one in your class? What if I'm the only one on your shift that's not good at anything? The younger generation's asking us as the leaders in their lives, do you know what I can do? And we get to look at them in the eyes and say, absolutely. Of course you're gifted. Just don't neglect that gift. Fan that gift into flame. Don't neglect that gift. Of course you're gifted. And so guys, when we're talking about this idea, what I keep coming back to is that when it comes to mentorship and leading the next generation, it's our job to help them figure out what they can do, right? We might not know right off the bat. Um, It's fun to watch people kind of come into their own and figure out what they're gifted at. And that's gonna take failure. That's gonna take them doing things that they're not good at. I've done a lot of things that I'm very, very not good at. And I do some of them still, and I'm really sorry. But we get to be there for them for that. We get to help them figure out what is it that is your thing? What's your lane? What can you do? But we get to stand with them and say, of course, you've got a gift. Just don't neglect it. And we're going to fan it into flame together. We get to be the Pauls in their lives. Guys, we've got the most incredible generation around us, and I'm I'm really convinced that they're going to put the world back together. Um, They're so good, and they're so kind, and loving, and inclusive, and they won't stand for any kind of injustice of any kind. And I'm just, I'm convinced that they're gonna take this world and just make it right. And they're gonna fill it with the love that they've got inside them. But right now they're on that other side and they're wondering if that's true. They're, they don't see what we see is the thing, guys. As leaders, it's really easy to look at the faces of our kids and say, and see what we see in them, see their giftedness, see their love, see their, the good things that God's put in them, but they don't see that yet. A lot of them don't. They really don't see that yet. And what if the one thing that's keeping them from taking that step into their lane, from following their passions, following after God, living life authentically true to how God wired them, what if the one thing keeping them from taking that one step over the line is a word that you or I could say? Is one of us coming and saying, hey, you're really good at that. Did you, did you realize that? It, it's not that complicated. Like this is a big deal and it, it feels kind of heavy because it's serious and there's a lot of weight to it, but it's not that complicated. It's literally just like, hey, you're, you're good at that. Hey, that was really, you did that very well. Do you know that you're good at that? I ask the kids that all the time. Like, do you know that you're really good at that? Because a lot of times they're like, oh no, I don't. I, I just thought everyone could do it. I thought everyone was good at writing for the longest time. I, I was copy editor of my school yearbook. I would, my friends would send me their papers to proof when we were in high school. I have a friend in law school who still does, and I have no idea what she's talking about, but I can definitely check her grammar. Um, I, I thought that that was no big deal. I didn't think that that was a thing. I thought everyone was good at that, right? And it wasn't until I got older that I thought, oh, wow, everyone's, that's, that's unique. Everyone's good at different things. And our kids are in that boat, you guys. And they're waiting for us to call that out in them. And like Paul, we get to look into them in the eyes and say with confidence that they've got a gift and not ever, ever to neglect it. I think about my own story and I I think that, you know, anything I've really gotten to do, anything I've ever done in my calling was really only because I had someone else point something out in me. It's really hard for people to see the things that they carry in themselves. It's hard for people to see their own gifts and so that's why God gives us each other so that we can all point that out in each other and lead each other and be that body of Christ together. And I look at my own story and I see that. 
When I first came to Anona, I had no church background. I was not raised in church. I didn't grow up in church, but I started following Jesus, and I knew that church was where I thought Jesus was, so I was just like, well, I'll just hang out at church all the time, right? That was just like my answer. Um, and that kind of didn't stop, right, because <laughs> I'm still here. Um, but I, I remember being at church one night, and my friend Natalie, who used to be on staff here, she came up to me, and she said, hey, how comfortable are you in front of a camera? And I was like, oh, I don't know, like, whatever. I'm kind of a ham, so that's fine. And she's like, great, because I really need someone to do video announcements, and I don't want to do them anymore. She had been doing this job that she really didn't want to do, and she was like, I love filming, and I don't love being in front of the camera. And I was like, oh, well, that's no big deal. Like, I can, I can help you with that, and that sounds really fun. Like, and I couldn't believe that she wanted me to, to do that, to be included. But that was the start of pretty much everything else I've gotten to do in church, was that first experience. And it happened because somebody else looked at me and said, hey, you're kind of good at this. Do you want to try it? And I said, okay. And then from there, Richard Landon, who's one of our pastors here, he's, he's my pastor. And he said, hey, well, how about you do announcements with me on Sunday mornings, then I'll teach you how to pray in front of people. And I was like, well, that sounds terrifying. I don't know about that, but then I did it. And now I do that all the time. Uh, then he let me preach a five-minute sermonette, is what we called it. It was, it was not a full sermon. It was a sermonette because it was so small and short. And, but these guys, the point of all these stories is that there was never a time where I was like, hey, I'm really, really good at this. I should definitely do ministry for a living. Like, that was not my story. It all came from people coming up to me and little by little just saying, hey, I think you might, you might be able to do this. This might be something that you could do. And another person that's that for me on Mother's Day would be, we'd be remiss not to acknowledge that our moms are so good at that. I know that for me, my mom has been just one of the most influential voices in my life to always be calling out gifts in my brother and I, to always be shepherding us into what we can't see in ourselves. And so moms, you're doing this every day. But guys, it's, what we have to come back to is that it can't stay here We've got to take this out into our communities, into our jobs, into the, our extended families, into our neighborhoods, into our friends. Guys, we need each and every member of the body of Christ living in their full potential, in the, the fullness of the part that God has for them to play. And that might not be able to happen if somebody doesn't go up to them first, if somebody doesn't lead them into what their part might be. And guys, it's a joy that we get to do that. And so as we kind of wrap up here, um, the action steps that I'm, I'm thinking that we could take this week is this. Maybe just for now, call to mind one, one person that you could point out a gift in this week. Just one person and one thing. It's not, it doesn't have to be a big assignment. One person. Who is somebody that you work with that might um, have really gone unnoticed lately? Who's somebody that you lead or that you parent that, you know, maybe they would do really well with just a, a quick, hey, you're doing really great at this. Hey, I really see this in you. And point it out. Call that out in them. What's that one thing that you can say to that one person? And then if you want to really, really take it to the next level, what would it be like if you took that person to coffee? What would it be like if just this week, just one person for one hour, it's really simple, I'm not, I'm not giving us a whole lot here, one person, one gift, one hour. We take them to coffee for an hour and just say, hey, I don't know if you realize this, but I just think that you're doing really well at this, and I just want to know, what's your story? Hey, what, where do you come from? A lot of people are currently doing things that maybe they're not passionate about, and they've got these underlying passions inside of them that they really wish they could be living and fulfilling, but they just aren't in the place to yet. And man, what a gift it is for people to get to share that and talk through that and say, this is what I, what's really in my heart to do. And gosh, what a gift that you could sit across the table from someone and say, hey, I see that in you. Can I help you with that? How can I help you fan your gift from God into flame? How can I help you be the body of Christ? So one person, one gift, and one hour at coffee. And guys, we get to be the Pauls in people's lives. We get to remind them that they're not excluded, that yes, there's a gift in you. We get to be those voices that have led all of us on towards our callings. And so many of you are already doing that right now. Through your parenting, through your mothering, through your jobs, through your leadership, you're doing that. And now it's just time for us to take that to the next level. So would you guys pray with me? God, we are 
we're really grateful for all the people that have been voices in our lives to help us and get us to where we are. We're grateful for um, the opportunity to be that voice for someone else. And God, it's really crazy to think that there are people that might even be in this room right now, people that we might know, that's got gifts and passions and ideas and big, big dreams just stirring in their hearts. And maybe they feel like they're just counted out. Maybe they don't think that they're really good at those things. Maybe they're second guessing themselves. And so God, we just ask that you would help us to be those Pauls in people's lives and to say, that's a gift, don't neglect it. Don't ignore that. Don't sit on that gift because the world needs it. If this world's gonna get better, if this world's gonna get more unified and more full of the love that you have for each person, God, it's gonna take the church joining together and operating as the body of Christ. And so God, would you help us to do that? Mentoring is a big responsibility and it's an impactful one. And we're grateful that we could do that in our families, in our jobs, in our churches, in our neighborhoods. Lord, and let our congregation be one that lives into our gifts. So if there are people here that have got those hidden gifts, those hidden dreams, let them not hide them from us anymore. The world needs what you've put inside each of them in each of us. So help us be a part of fanning it all into flame. In Jesus' name, amen.